Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very important clinical point, the differentiating points between a striatal toe and a Babinski sign where there could be an extension of the big toe. So if we see uh, an extension of the big toe, is it a striatal toe that is because of the extra permanent disorders or is it a Babinski sign which is because of the permanent tract lesions. So how are we going to approach and how are we going to differentiate? So the differentiating points between the striatal toe and the Babinski sign. The striatal toe occurs in extra permanent disorders. The striatal toe occurs in extra permanent disorders. Whereas the big toe being extended occurs as a part of the Babinski sign which is seen in corticospinal tract disorders. So Babinski sign is seen in corticospinal tract disorders that is pyramidal tract lesions whereas the striatal toe is seen in the extra pyramidal tract disorders. Striatal toe is a sustained extension of the great toe, sustained tonic extension of the great toe with the flexion of the other toe. The striatal toe is the sustained extension of the great toe with the flexion of the other toes. So if we see only the big toe going up and other toes flex, it is more in favor and that too it is sustained, it is more in favor of striatal toe. Whereas in Babinski sign, when, when we are trying to get a Babinski sign because of the permal tract lesion, there will be extension of the big toe, fine. But instead of flexion, there is fanning of the other toes. So in Babinski sign, there is an extension of the big toe, but fanning of the other toes. Whereas in a striatal toe, there is an extension, sustained extension of the big toe with the flexion of the other toes. The third point is that the striatal toe may occur even without stimulation may occur even without plantar stimulation but to get the Babinski sign we need to elicit the plantar we need to stimulate the plantar surface we come laterally and go towards the big toe and then only we get the response the big toe going upwards the other toes getting fanned up so Babinski sign can be elicited with plantar stimulation whereas the striatal toe can be elicited even without plantar stimulation the extension of the big toe, the sustained extension of the big toe occurs uh, in striatal toe conditions as part of the feet dystonia. It occurs as a part of feet dystonia. So what are all the other manifestations which we usually see? There could be along with the sustained toe extension in striatal toe, the other manifestations which can be seen are ankle inversion the ankle could be inverted arching of the sole flexion of the other toes which we call it as striatal feet so these are all the other manifestations which are associated with the striatal toe one there could be ankle inversion arching of the sole or flexion of the other toes striatal feet Whereas in Babinski sign, it can occur as a part of the triple flexion response. Babinski sign can occur as a part of triple flexion response. So what are the other three components which we see in the Babinski sign? One, the flexion of the thigh on the pelvis. Flexion of the thigh on the pelvis. Second, flexion of the leg on the thigh. Flexion of the leg on the thigh. And the third is the flexion of the feet on the leg. So Babinski sign is seen as a part of the triple flexion response. It occurs as a part of the triple flexion response. Whereas the striatal toe occurs as a part of feet dystonia. And since striatal toe is because of uh, extra permanent disorders, we may be able to see other features of extra permanent signs. Whereas Babinski sign is because of the corticospinal tract dysfunction. So we see other signs of corticospinal tract dysfunction like deep tendon reflexes being exaggerated, superficial reflexes being absent, and uh, hypertonia. 
So these are all the important differences of striatal toe and Babinski sign. We tend to get confused because in both conditions the big toe goes in for extension. So if we approach the clinical scenario with these important differences, then we will be able to clinch the diagnosis. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments, kindly post on to my YouTube channel. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinwas Medical Concepts and my FB page, Dr. Sinwas Concepts. Thank you. Bye. Entry rate, let's look at the same thing.